But, but Bob, yeah, I ask you to comment the Rossi uh, experiment. It's Rossi exactly it's what I'm doing. So can can you see what I have here? Yes, we see we see this. Okay, so um, we did this experiment last year. Uh, it's uh, basically, in my opinion, it is exotic vacuum objects blowing up, and you see a cold pack. Okay, uh, this one produced EMPs as on a radio station. But anyway, I, I'll cut to the chase. <laughs> so uh, I believe that the original version of the ECAT was based on a 1996 paper by um, Alec, uh, by Murray B. King, published uh, in 2001. And uh, it's using xenon, a normal um, abnormal glow discharge, and using a hollowed cathode that makes a toroidal output. That I believe is the original ECAT uh, in, in this generation. And um, in 1997, John Hutchison switched from an open discharge to xenon hid tubes. And uh, as we know, an intense discharge will produce strange radiation and it will leave the uh, um, discharge tube. This was repeatedly pulsed. It wasn't struck and then kept open. Before that, he was using open discharges. This uh, tube I actually saw in Germany in uh, January the 6th, 2018, and I published it on June, June, January the 7th, 2018. It's the same one that you see in the Hutchison effect uh, experiments in, on this video here in 2007. So he's using a, an abnormal discharge within a xenon hid tube. If you look at the Rossi demonstration, and I thank Can for finding this, he's taken the top off a xenon 12 volt automotive ballast 35 watt. I believe that what you see in the uh, ECAT uh, uh, um, so-called energy generator is one of these automotive um, xenon uh, dis tube, discharge tubes with tungsten electrodes. Uh, brilliant light power in their assessment of their welder and silver and HHO, they observed within the strike the optical emission from uh, extreme UV to be 250 times the photonic energy of the applied electrical energy. This on the right is the non-standard um, attachment of the uh, power and control to the HID ballast controller. And on the left here, you can see him rewiring. And I want you to look at the reflection in this area here. And as he plugs it in, you'll see the strike comes and then the, the glow is at a much lower level. And he does this a couple of times. So there's an initial flash and then it goes to glow at a much lower level. In the circuit diagram I have here, um, Rossi covered up a few components, which I believe that he was covering up the things that we should be looking at. So in one of the circuit boards on the lower left of his array of circuit boards, he had covered up this device here, which looks like an SLA, 12 volt DC SLA. And it, I believe it's a, a, a relay for switching. He also had a, um, this exact device here, and the links where you can go and purchase these things are here. Uh, it's a step down buck converter with advanced potentiometer, ad adjustable pulse width uh, voltage con uh, converter, uh, and it's an Arduino. So it's potential that he was using this device to control the power post uh, strike. And I believe it's very important, this uh, relay here, um, this is uh, someone drew up this thing based on a concept, but if you replace this relay in this section, you could imagine that the ballast is striking and, and then inefficiently controlling the hid bulb. And then periodically it's switching using that relay to dump the power into the load. Okay. I don't know what's going on in the background. I'm sorry for that audio. That's uh, the video that I tried to start earlier. Now, under the base of the ECAT, uh, you have this glowing box, and I believe this is almost an exact fit scale-wise for this uh, solar panel, which is six volts, one watt, uh, uh, to zero to 200 milliamps. The one watt is supposed to be the power that drives the device, and one of the other devices which he covered up with a heat sink 
was this device, which is a DC to DC boost converter. And that this could take the power uh, from six volts or whatever, uh, the output from the solar panel and boost it up to maybe the input power required to drive the uh, HID ballast. Uh, and he covered up this particular component with a uh, heater. Now, Ken Shoulders preferred to use uh, Xenon to stabilize his EVOs uh, as the gaff is both heavy and easily ionized. And it also has a lot of D and F shell uh, orbital electrons that can be captured. It can be made to fission and can release vast amounts of kinetic energy at 41.3 mega electron volts for one fissioning atom. And then um, you also have an unstable isotope, which is a double beta decay, which could uh, um, do uh, inverse beta decay. 